What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to show you 10 keyword research tools that are completely free and I'll include a link in the description in the comment section for each one of them. So let's dive in. The first tool on our list is the keyword cheater. Now what I like about this tool is it's going to take your primary keyword and then give you every variation imaginable. But because of that, you're going to get such a large data set that it's often hard to parse and clean up that data. It also doesn't provide a search volume or search intent, so you're going to have to use your best judgment. You just type in your primary keyword, select sheet keywords, and then it's going to give you a list. After running the program for about 30 seconds, it gave me 324 keywords. So I would take these keywords, I would put them in Excel or Google Sheets, and I would remove anything that isn't relevant for my website. Next on our list is Google Trends. You just add a search term. We're going to be looking up ChatGPT. You click enter. And what this is going to do is show you interest over time, interest by subregion. In this case, I have the United States selected. It's also going to show you related topics. And then what we're actually looking for is related queries. Now you can either select rising or you can select top. And you can export this list and it's going to show you the trend for all of those queries over time. What I like about Google Trends is that it's actually showing you relevant user data. What I don't like about Google Trends is that it's really narrow in its focus. And if you're trying to do this at scale, it's going to be way too time consuming. Our next tool is going to be Surfer SEO's Chrome extension. And what I like about this tool is that it works directly on the SERP. So you type in your query and it's going to give you an estimated search volume and then also a cost per click if one is available. When you scroll down, you're going to see on the right side of your screen a whole list of keyword ideas as well as the search volume that's associated with them. I tend to think that their search volume is overinflated, so I wouldn't necessarily use that as a metric. However, it is a really great tool when you're looking for other keyword ideas. Our next free option is Uber Suggest. What I like about this tool is it's super simple to use. It's going to provide you with a list of related keywords, search volume, and search intent. There's also a free Chrome extension that you can add and it's going to show you the search volume while you're actually looking on the SERP. Once you've typed in your query, you're going to get a table similar to this one, where you have your keywords, your search volume, your cost per click, your paid difficulty, your SEO difficulty, and the last time it was updated within their system. And there are also tabs where you can click into related, questions, prepositions, and comparisons. Next on our list is going to be Google's Keyword Planner that's found within Google Ads. You just click Discover New Keywords or Get Search Volume and Forecasts, Type in your keyword or start with your website. This is going to give you a list of keywords similar to the one that's on the screen. Now there is a caveat to this. If you haven't spent any money within Google Ads, you're going to see search volume that's wildly opaque. For example, our first keyword here is digital marketing consulting, and it's telling us that it has a search volume of either 100,000 to 1 million searches every month. While it's a great place to start, it's not necessarily going to help you refine your list if you're trying to do it based off of search volume. Now, I've also ran the exact same prompt within Google Ads and it's provided us with the exact same list of keywords. However, you'll see that the average monthly searches is actually much more accurate. Instead of suggesting that digital marketing consulting has a range of 100,000 to 1 million searches per month, the account where I'm actually using Google Ads is showing us that it's exactly 135,000 and it shows interest over time. The free version is serviceable and it provides you a great look at other keywords that are related to your primary one, but just keep in mind that you do have to spend a little bit of money if you want actual data. Next on our list is the free version of ChatGPT, which is currently 3.5. As long as you're using a strong prompt, you should get exactly what you're looking for. I'll include this prompt in the description and also in the comment section so that you can just simply copy and paste it. This prompt is going to be generating a list of 40 keywords closely related to your primary keyword. And we're specifying that we don't want any duplicate phrases. We're creating a markdown table with two columns, one for keywords and one for search intent. We're specifying that search intent in this instance means commercial, transactional, navigational, informational, local, or investigational. And then lastly, it's going to take all of those keywords and provide it in a comma-separated list list so it's easier to copy and paste. After you run your prompt, you should get a response similar to the one that's on the screen. This is going to include our primary keyword at the top and then all of its related key phrases. And then at the bottom, we have our comma separated list. You can also repeat this process by specifying that you want long tail keywords, NLP, or even LSI keywords. And it's going to do that for you. Next on our list is Ahrefs free keyword research tool. You click which search engine you're looking for, Google, Bing, YouTube, or Amazon, you type in your keyword, 
and you get a response similar to the one that's on the screen. This is going to provide you with the keyword, the keyword difficulty, the estimated search volume, and the last time it was updated within their system. If you're looking for free keyword research tools, Ahrefs should definitely be added to your arsenal. Next up on our list is actually going to be two tools, and they do very similar things, so that's why I'm including them together. The first is going to be Answer the Public. You just add a topic or a keyword and click Search. You can scroll down and it's going to visualize all of your search terms. And because we are on a free account, it's not going to show everything, but you will have a general idea of long tail keywords. I actually don't like the visualization. I think it's a little too difficult to read and navigate. So what I do is click on data and it's going to populate all of that information in cards and it's much more readable. The second tool is also asked. I actually prefer this one, but with Answer the Public, you get three free searches a day and also ask you get two. But what I like about this tool is it creates a visualization, but it makes much more sense. You have your starting term here, and then it's going to break them down into webs similar to the flow on People Also Ask. When you're on Google SERP and you find a People Also Ask, you click one question and then that drops down into multiple questions. That's exactly what this tool does just on a higher level. Now, each one of these plus icons you can click and that's going to drop this web down further. If you wanna export it as a PNG, that's available. And then there's also a CSV export, but that's for paid membership. I like both of these tools for long tail keywords. I think it's a great way to do research there. And it's also fantastic for adding FAQs to a page or providing this within the content outline. Next up is Google Search Console. And the reason I love Search Console so much is it's showing you actual query data from real people finding your website. You can drill down whether you want it to be web, image, video, or news. You can compare any of them. You can select a date range and also compare a date range. And then there are also a whole other list of things that you can do, such as drilling down to one specific page, one specific query, where people people found you, what device they were on, what country they searched from. It's a really great option. It's also great for identifying those areas where you are ranking for a search term, but you're not necessarily including it on your page. And lastly, I use it all the time to tweak my metadata. So I will find a query on here that I really want to rank for, and I'll include that within the meta title and in a meta description to see if we can improve our click-through rate. And there you have it my top 10 list for free keyword research tools. All of them have their unique pros and cons, but they all provide you with enough data so that you can hit the ground running. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs up anyway. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, this is Todd.